Welcome to The Standard from Vancouver. I'm Randall Mark. Tonight, the star of the host of the hit TV show, The Last 10 Pounds Boot Camp. You'll see an interview with Tommy Europe a bit later. But first, a religious leader representing more than 420 million people. With a history that dates back over 150 years, the World Evangelical Alliance is a network of churches spreading out through about 128 nations. Its goal is to give a worldwide identity, voice and platform to evangelical Christians. The CEO and International Director of the World Evangelical Alliance is Jeff Tunnicliffe. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Randall. When I think of evangelicals and most people in the media and, and many people that don't know much about evangelicals, they have a stereotype in their mind. They have this uh, kind of American right-wing, pro-war, pro-Israel, anti-kind of gay. That's the slice that people have immediately. And yet your organization, you in particular, I think are trying to push against that. Tell me about uh, uh, the struggle that you're having trying to recreate the identity of what it means to be an evangelical. Well, we all know that media is a very powerful tool and it communicates a lot of different messages. And the reality is that media has taken a slice of evangelical Christians, predominantly from the U.S., mm. and projected them as if they're the entire uh, representation of evangelicals around the world. I like to remind people that evangelical Christians in the U.S. only make up 8% of all the evangelical Christians in the world. And then the media is only actually portraying a part of those. Yes, certainly they would be part of our evangelical family, but they certainly don't represent so the So that 8% though seems to get the major voice. Well, it's actually smaller than the 8%. It's only a percentage of the 8% that represent, because right. not all American evangelicals right. yeah, course, are, right. are, are, have that same perspective as well. And, and yet, uh, when, when you get this impression that there's this monolithic voice that speaks as one on issues like war, for instance, that we're into the war in Iraq, and everyone, every evangelical apparently is thumbs up for that, and yet that's not the case. No, absolutely not. There's a great diversity within our community, and that certainly is one of the voices within the evangelical community. But I would say that is not the dominant voice around the world mm. uh, in regarding uh, many issues. And, um, and that's the challenge for us. I think uh, we want, as evangelicals, to be seen for in the entirety of what we believe and not just for a slice of what we believe. So what do you say then? Because if this organization that you represent is this large umbrella organization for a whole number of views, what do you say to people that have extreme views that were within your, that are within your organization? When the Pat Robertsons, the Jerry Falwells, the Oral Roberts speak, do you say our organization, those are not our views? Or does the organization have a view on, uh, on some of these kind of issues that they're so loudly speaking well, of? Well, it certainly depends on what they're talking about. I mean, we've certainly, uh, when Pat Robertson made his comments about uh, assassinating the president yeah, of Venezuela, Chavez, yeah, yeah we, we made a public comment about that. Why? Because the leaders of the evangelical movement in Venezuela asked us to. Mm. That was our body there. They said, this is going to hurt how we're perceived in our country. And certainly the majority of evangelical Christians didn't go along with Robertson. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that he was actually damaging the global uh, mm. perspective of, of evangelicals. So you, you're, not, you don't, you're not shy of speaking out against some of these comments? No, absolutely not. I mean, we, uh, we're, we seek to do it in grace mm -hmm. and in love, but we're also going to say, listen, if that's not representative of who we are, if that's distorting a picture of who we are as, as Christians, then we're going to say something. Mm. Well, I mean, this instance, I want to go back to this issue of, of, of um, this American slice that seems to dominate. For instance, this issue of being pro-Israel. Uh, it seems to be like the Israel can do no wrong, and evangelicals in the very Zionistic uh, uh, you know, a, a, approval that they have of Israel's policies against Palestinians, wouldn't evangelicals have maybe a different perspective? Uh, absolutely. There's probably several perspectives yeah. on that whole very complex situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there in Israel uh, twice uh, recently, and once uh, last year I was there earlier, and I met with uh, Christian leaders in Israel, but also Christian leaders among the Palestinians mm -hmm. in the West Bank, in Bethlehem. And when I came back, I wrote a story about it. And people actually analyzed a number of words I wrote about each group uh, because wow. they were concerned. Which that side you were coming down on? Yeah. And the reality is we're concerned for both. We believe in the state of Israel mm -hmm. has a right to exist and, and has the protection. People need to live without fear that they're going to be bombed. Mm -hmm. At mm -hmm. the same time, there's a need for justice in the entire region. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in Bethlehem and meeting with Christian leaders. 
uh, there. Uh, I met with the mayor mm -hmm. of Bethlehem, and you know we're coming up to Christmas. Uh, Bethlehem has been devastated because of the lack of tourism. It used to get 75, 100 tour buses a day. Now it gets five, and it's it, it's just impacting the economy in, in profound ways. And many of those who are being impacted are Christians. And uh, so we're saying we want to speak out for justice. Mm -hmm. And so I met with the leaders of the Israeli government. And yes, they said, we're, there, we're our friends. They right. said, you evangelical Christians, you're our best friends in the world. I said, we are your friends. Mm. But then I asked them, I said, you know, if as friends, why did you close down 20 of our churches last year in Israel? Mm. Why is it that Arab Christians in your country, amongst our churches, the pastors can't get credentials to marry and bury? Mm. Why is it we can't get permits for those leaders in Bethlehem and our churches to come to conferences in Jerusalem? And mm. I said, we want to be your friends, but friends need so to be... So you're saying, we've got to hold your feet to the fire. Absolutely. We're not just, it's just carte blanche, do whatever you want. No, and that's been the, that's been the concern, is that mm. people have given a carte blanche uh, mm. in those kind of situations without understanding the entire uh, scenario. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break, but right after the break, I, I want you to comment on the issue of... Uh, the hot button issues, a couple of them, because I know evangelicals get pigeonholed in some of their, their typical approaches to them, but I want to get your read on them. So right after the break, we'll talk about issues of homosexuality right after the break.